Have you ever considered living in a place where water simultaneously sustains life and threatens everything? This is the reality of the Netherlands, officially known as the Low Countries. A nation so small that a significant portion of its territory lies below sea level, and where for centuries people have had to learn to coexist with the constant risk of floods. Here any misstep could result in the ruin of entire crops, submerge farmlands and devastate rural life. But instead of fleeing from the problem, they faced it head-on, transforming adversity into a solution and creating one of the world's most advanced agricultural systems amidst their challenges. Even with limited space and a difficult climate, the country has become a major producer of tomatoes, bell peppers, flowers, and award-winning cheeses, all while becoming a global benchmark in food production. All of this on a territory smaller than the state of Rhode Island. But how did such a small place achieve such remarkable success? That's exactly what I'm going to tell you in another unbelievable video. Not too long ago, we showed you on this channel how Israel managed to become an agricultural leader in the heart of the desert. If you haven't seen that video yet, it's definitely worth watching afterward. Everything they created there is truly out of this world. But today's topic is different. We're going to talk about a country that experiences the exact opposite situation. A place where water is not scarce. The problem in this case is having too much of it. For a very long time, those born there understood that to live in that environment, they needed to learn to control the tides. Approximately one-third of the country lies below sea level. And even the parts on dry land are constantly affected by floods. Imagine living with the perpetual threat of seeing your city, your home, and your crops inundated by salt water. This is precisely why the Dutch developed an astonishingly complex system of dikes, canals, and pumping stations all designed to keep the sea at bay. Without this system, much of the country simply wouldn't be habitable. To give you an idea, entire cities have been built on areas that were once open sea, all thanks to a technique called polderization. Essentially, they build dikes to enclose a body of water and then gradually drain it until the land is firm enough for planting, raising livestock or constructing cities. However, managing the water was only half the battle. The soil wasn't always fertile, the climate offered little assistance, and space was extremely limited. The Netherlands has one of the highest population densities in the world, meaning the land needed to be incredibly productive. And this is where their ingenuity truly shone. Instead of giving up, they turned the situation around. They learned to work collaboratively, because maintaining a dike requires everyone's participation, from the simplest farmer to local administrators. Throughout the 20th century, the Netherlands continued to reclaim land from the sea. Each newly drained area, or polder, represented a victory, more available land for cultivation, livestock, or urban expansion. However, transforming a marsh into productive farmland wasn't straightforward. These newly drained terrains were often brackish, unstable, and low in fertility. It required more than just engineering. It demanded applied science on the ground, but the sea wasn't the only obstacle. The Dutch climate also presented challenges. Intense cold, limited sunlight, frequent rainfall, harsh winters, and underwhelming summers, nothing like the tropics or the Mediterranean. To achieve large-scale production, they needed to find a way to overcome the limitations of their natural environment. And that's precisely what they did. In the post-war period, as the country grappled with scarcity and hunger, an idea began to gain traction. If they couldn't change the climate outside, they could create their own climate inside. This is how the concept of greenhouse agriculture gradually emerged, eventually becoming the hallmark of Dutch production. In the beginning, Dutch greenhouses were simple, but they were effective. They controlled temperature and protected plants from the unpredictable weather. Over time, this evolved dramatically, transforming regions like Westland in the southern Netherlands into veritable seas of glass, these are vast complexes covered by transparent structures where every detail is meticulously calculated. Inside, everything is controlled. Temperature, humidity, air circulation, CO2 levels and lighting. And when we try to understand how such a small country achieves such astounding productivity, the answer lies within these greenhouses. This is where what's known as precision agriculture comes into play. 
A significant portion of the produce is grown hydroponically or aeroponically, meaning the plant's roots never touch the soil. The roots grow in substrates like mineral wool or cocoa coir, or are even suspended in air, receiving nutrients through drip or misting systems, everything precisely measured. The results are jaw-dropping. Some regions harvest up to 70 kilograms, around 154 pounds, of tomatoes per square meter per year, which is about 10 times more than what could be achieved in open field cultivation in warmer climates. Water consumption is reduced to a fraction of what a conventional plantation would require. All of this is achieved with intelligent water recycling systems. Rainwater is collected, stored, redistributed, and if there's any excess, it's filtered and reused. This results in near zero waste and minimal environmental impact. Pest control also follows this efficient logic. Instead of widespread pesticide use, many growers opt for natural predatory insects that target only the harmful pests. There are even strategically placed beehives to ensure perfect pollination. With such advanced technology, these greenhouses more closely resemble state-of-the-art agricultural laboratories. Double-glazed windows retain heat. LEDs simulate sunlight. Real-time sensors monitor conditions. And the level of automation is so high that you sometimes barely see people working. The systems manage almost everything. Once again, the key to success was collaboration. Farmers shared their experiences, divided costs and collectively tested what worked best. The success of one became a benchmark for others, but none of this would have been possible without an essential pillar, science. In this regard, if there's one name practically synonymous with the Dutch agricultural revolution, it's Wageningen University and Research, WR. Globally recognized as one of the leading research centers for agriculture, food and the environment, WR is more than just a university. It's a true engine of innovation at the heart of the country. It was within its cutting-edge laboratories, experimental greenhouses and research fields that many of the solutions that radically transformed Dutch agriculture were born or perfected. Imagine the genetic development of super-productive pest-resistant seeds, advanced water management techniques, optimizing water use in polders and greenhouses, and the creation of precision cultivation systems, biological control, and custom fertilization. Dalyuar's influence is pervasive and its impact extends beyond the farm gate. The university plays a crucial role behind the scenes, studying and optimizing entire supply chains, analyzing agricultural economics, assessing environmental impacts, and proposing pathways for more sustainable production. It contributes to training professionals and shaping strategies that keep the country at the forefront. It was with this dedicated focus on innovation directly connected to growers and the government, that the Netherlands managed to turn its challenges into competitive advantages, evolving from merely the land of tulips to a respected powerhouse and a global agricultural reference. Of course, tulips play an important role. Flowers in general generate billions of euros annually and are a significant part of the country's identity. However, Dutch agriculture extends far beyond floriculture. The export of bulbs, cut flowers and ornamental plants is indeed a success. But another sector that stands out significantly is horticulture. Tomatoes, bell peppers, cucumbers, chilies, eggplants, all are shipped directly from greenhouses to supply all of Europe. Potatoes and onions are also major exports, fundamental staples in the European diet, and the Netherlands exports them on a massive scale, despite its limited arable land. And when it comes to dairy, the Dutch also excel. The production of cheeses like Gouda and Edam is world-renowned, but behind these cheeses lies highly technologized dairy farming, featuring robotic milking systems, individual cow monitoring, and a level of precision that would impress many industries. And if you think you've seen it all, prepare yourself. In 2019, the Netherlands inaugurated something unprecedented, a floating farm. Yes, a farm built on the water with three functional levels. The first houses the cows, the second is used for manure processing, and the third collects rainwater. This structure operates almost self-sufficiently, generating energy from solar panels, collecting and purifying rainwater, and even converting manure into natural fertilizer. The cows feed on grass from golf courses, potato scraps, grain meal, and even byproducts from the brewing industry. 
Most curiously, they have free access to a dry area whenever they wish to leave the platform. Each cow has 15 square meters, approximately 161 square feet of space, significantly more than the standard in conventional dairy farms. Everything was designed with animal welfare in mind, from the soft rubber flooring to the individual stalls. In the fruit sector, even without a tropical climate, the Netherlands finds a way. With adapted greenhouses, they manage to produce strawberries and even some tropical fruits on a smaller scale, simulating the ideal climate within completely controlled environments. The most impressive aspect is that even without ideal natural conditions, the Netherlands competes in quality and productivity with larger, warmer countries that have much more space. All of this is possible because technology isn't confined to laboratories. It reaches the fields, from university research to practical application in greenhouses, farms and canals. Everything functions as a network and knowledge circulates within this network. This is perhaps the greatest strength of the Low Countries. But like anything in life, it's not all roses. The Netherlands also faces challenges and they are not few. High population density, intensive greenhouse use and a large livestock population have led to environmental issues that are now at the center of debate. One of the most discussed is nitrogen excess, which has been a problem for years. The government has had to implement strict measures to control emissions, leaks and effluents from farms, particularly from intensive livestock operations. Another sensitive issue is the pollution of surface waters caused by pesticides and fertilizers. Although precision agriculture has significantly helped reduce chemical use, some areas, especially those with a high concentration of greenhouses, still show levels above the ideal. In response, the country has been steering agriculture towards a more circular model, with less waste, more recycling and clean energy in the process. Today it's increasingly common to see greenhouses heated by geothermal energy or powered by solar panels. Many farms utilize biogas generated from organic waste, closing a loop where almost everything is reused. Another topic gaining significant traction is the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. Intensive livestock farming, especially of cattle and pigs, is facing pressure from new environmental regulations and many producers are being forced to adapt. In some cases, the debate even revolves around reducing herd sizes and focusing on more efficient and less polluting livestock practices. Despite all these obstacles, the Netherlands remains steadfast in its commitment to continuing its leadership in innovation and the export of sustainable food. Because ultimately, everyone there understands one simple truth. If the country doesn't take care of its environment, all its agricultural success could literally go down the drain especially when we remember that everything depends on dikes and coexistence with the sea. So what did you think of this agricultural revolution? Do you believe the Dutch model could be adapted to other parts of the world? Share your opinion in the comments below. Want to see more incredible machines and mind-blowing engineering? Just click right here to discover your next fascinating watch.